Welcome to the Everybody Matters podcast, a show dedicated to the idea that when organizations care enough to show their people that who they are and what they do matter, they unlock the only business idea with truly unlimited potential. I'm Brent Stewart, your host. This podcast is an outreach of Barry Waymiller. Don't forget to connect with us on the web at barrywaymiller.com, on Twitter at Barry Waymiller, on Facebook and LinkedIn, and check out our blog, trulyhumanleadership.com. In a large organization, it's often difficult for the people inside to feel connected. For example, Barry Waymiller is a mix of more than 90 companies with 11,000 team members in more than 100 locations in 28 countries around the world. To make matters even more complicated, within our manufacturing workforce, we have many team members who are not in front of a computer at any point in their day. Many don't have smartphones. We've made significant investments to ensure that our culture is felt by every person in our organization, but it's a lot of work. We know there's still much progress to be made. In today's organizations, which are often large and global with many locations, how can companies help every single person feel like they matter? How can they help them feel like they're more than just a dot on a map or a name on a very long spreadsheet? To discuss this issue, Mary Rudder, Barry Waymiller's director of global messaging and I reached out to a friend here in St. Louis whose company uses technology to help people feel more connected. Mark Sawyer is the CEO and co-founder of a workplace culture platform called Bonfire. As Mark says in the podcast, Bonfire's why is to deliver technology to create a world where everybody loves their job. If everybody feels like they matter, that they're more than just a speck or a dot, Maybe that can happen. Let's talk to Mark Sawyer. I'd say our big idea is that at the end of the day, when it comes to building a highly engaged workforce or a strong culture, it all begins and ends with human relationships. And we live in a world where digital communication has become a fundamental part of how we all build relationships, right? Chats, photos, and videos are part of the fabric of of those relationships. And yet, when you look at the digital communication tools within every company today, they're designed for a very different purpose. They're designed to help you do your work. And those are great investments to make, um, but altogether different than the ones required to build relationships. So Bonfire creates the third space in between the tools you use at work to do your job and the tools you use in your personal life to build relationships. within within your workplace and um, you know when you look at bonfire you'd see it's a you know chat photo video sharing digital communication tool um, but other than that communication capability um, we have very little in common what with product traditional productivity tools um, our feature set is aligned with what we see as all of the key culture touch points within an organization so the product is designed to support internal communications, employee recognition, diversity and inclusion programs, employee experiences and events, um, and building building those relationships. Um, And I'd say maybe, you know, one of the most exciting things that comes out of Bonfire is the data and intelligence, because if you buy into this idea that relationships are critical and that um, a space designed to build relationships in today's world, a digital space, is different than one for doing work, then people are, you're led to the conclusion that people will use Bonfire differently. Um, And so the content, the nature of the conversation, the nature of the communication that's happening in Bonfire is categorically different um, than what you would find in other tools. And so, um, you know, we're able to correlate Bonfire use to performance, to retention, to, um, you know, if an organization wants to know uh, let's say they're, they're investing a lot of time and they, they, let's say they do an engagement survey and they hear from their employees, people don't feel appreciated at work. Okay. So hopefully uh, the company is going to make a bunch of investments to change that. Maybe they'll do some training, maybe they'll roll out a rewards program. Um, well, we have a tool that actually um, categorizes how people are using Bonfire across four key categories, um, knowledge sharing, collaboration, internal communications, and recognition. So we can literally see a compositional shift in the percentage of conversation related to recognition based on those investments. 
So how did you arrive at doing this, first of all? Like, what made you want to do this? Yeah. Um, well, you know, my co-founder, Chris, and I, we, um, we certainly didn't wake up and think, oh, let's build a workplace culture platform. Um, you know, I think like many startups, we, it was a journey, and we sort of um, found ourselves, we found our way here. Um, we really began as um, an event application. So um, we had companies like Express Scripts, and we actually had the St. Louis Rams and Budweiser using Bonfire for experiences that they were creating. And we discovered something pretty interesting around the corporate events because the communities, the bonfire communities that were launched around these experiences, whether it was an incentive trip or a, you know, a conference or a town hall or whatever, um, people kept using bonfire after the event was over and they kept using it as a way to build camaraderie, to share knowledge, collaborate. And so our customers started coming to us and saying, hey, oh my God, people, People are, they actually use your tool. They're actually enjoying it. Um, what else can we do with it? And so um, we began to sort of realize that events were, they're just, they're, they're one of the most important investments I think that companies make in building relationships because it's when you actually bring people together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really what we were seeing happen in Bonfire. And we realized that events were just, one, they're just one part of how companies are investing, whether they know it or not in building relationships. Um, and, and the other investments are all those culture touch points we mentioned earlier. So we started with events, but um, you know, expanded from there. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of how we arrived there. Were there any experiences you might have had in the workplace that might have kind of informed the need for something like this? A little bit. Um, you know, I've, I was, I'm fortunate in that I've been an entrepreneur basically since college. So um, you know, for the most part, I've sort of started my own thing and um, but uh, prior to that I was I did work at a, a investment bank that's no longer around it went under and I mean you know I, I, I certainly experienced um, the desire what it feels like to want to make an impact in a company and help them do things better and um, have that desire met with um, um, apathy mm -hmm. um, you know and, and sort of irrelevance Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that feeling is definitely something that I've experienced. So what kind of success stories are you seeing um, from use? Just in terms of you know, feeling like you guys are making a difference in individual people because of the way that this is able to improve culture in a lot of instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, there's a, uh, we could probably talk for an hour about that, but I'll try to keep it short. So I'd sort of answer that. Um, in a few different ways, uh, n in no particular order. First is just what people share. Um, you know, in Bonfire, we see people sharing photos of their kid that got past a congenital heart disease, or somebody running their first marathon, or um, you know, a, a leader um, actually living core values um, and actually sort of bringing those things to life in an emotive um, way. So we, you know, we, we, we see a natural desire amongst employees to build um, relationships. Actually, I think connecting it to something Bob said, you know, I think, I think he said something along the lines of, um, people are surprised to think that truly human leadership was born in the manufacturing world, right? And I'll tell you, when we launched our first um, bonfire communities and manufacturing plants, I mean, this was 12 hour shifts, English is a second language, not allowed to use your phone at work. I mean, pretty much like every reason you could possibly think of why Bonfire wouldn't work in that environment. And it's one of our most successful um, employee audiences because there is a natural desire for every person to build a human relationship with the people they work with. And again, in today's world, digital communication is a big part of that. So I'd say we can see it just quite plainly um, in the how people use Bonfire, what they're communicating. Um, for organizations, uh, you know, staying with that audience for a moment, right? So these employees typically don't have company email addresses. Um, and, you know, much like, I mean, I love the example um, in, in the book talking about how, you know, the manufacturing employee and a knowledge worker walk into the office, one goes left, one goes right, and they have entirely different experiences, right? Well, um, 
I, we, we would say that that same difference exists in, in um, the digital sure. tool experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so manufacturing employees get their information and are able to contribute and, you know, perform their work. Um, I mean, there's signs put up on walls. I mean, they're, they're a lot, most companies are relying on people to give verbal instructions um, to employees. And so one of the, uh, I think, most powerful things about Bonfire is we change that um, because it's a tool that every single employee can use, whether it's employee email or employee ID. We have a secure way to manage access to that. So we actually bring all employees together um, mm -hmm. in one environment. Yeah, it's funny because our, we, that's where we struggle, um, or we think we struggle. More than 50% of our population is in yeah. a manufacturing environment. All of our team members have email addresses, but they don't touch a computer. Right. So are you saying that you're the manufacturing environments to which you have you know, where you've been successful, do they spend their time at night then? Off working so hours, that's, engaging? That's one of the most powerful things is that it's not required. So it's a completely optional tool and people choose to use it when they're not working their shift. I mean, they, they're not allowed to use their phone um, while they're working. So yeah, it's a completely elected thing. And if you think about it from the employee's perspective, it's, you know, um, the, the trends in this respect are only going in one direction. like. People are going to have more smartphones and not fewer. They're going to be using that device more, not less. Um, so if you think about the, and, and the environment I was referring to, I mean, a lot of these employees, we also have language barriers and sort of other challenges, right? So um, if 50% of the plant population joins Bonfire, um, that has a huge ripple effect on how quickly information is shared, how well informed everyone feels, right? Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's, it's been exciting really to see the level of, of transformation that the tool has been able to, to have um, for these companies and, and communicating with their employees. So what do you think the motivation is for somebody to engage with this when they're off the clock? So I think, um, you know, how we approach this, uh, and I think it's very much in line with a lot of the principles in the book, is we, we actually, we put the employee at the center, right? So a lot of companies, and uh, when we first start talking with them, might Maybe they're rolling out new core values or something like that, and they say, oh, let's launch a bonfire for, you know, insert the name of your or acronym for your core values. And we sort of ask the question, well, you know, do, would any employees really want to join a bonfire just for that? Um, so it really begins with sort of saying, what would employees find valuable? So if you give that one, they all want more accurate, faster um, information. Um, we have translation capabilities. So, you know, the CEO of, you know, so one, a, a company can send a message, one-way communication to every single employee and they can hit a button and translate it into whatever language they want. Um, uh, so the, getting information, um, giving employees the opportunity to, um, you know, what, in some cases trade shifts or say, hey, can anybody um, help me out on this day? I'll trade. But you know, the other really cool thing is, particularly when you get people from a lot of different um, countries and backgrounds as, in ethnicities, is people share where they're from. Mm -hmm. And we see people sharing photos of dishes they make, like food that they're making, or photos of uh, you know wh where they were born and um, you know where they still have family and things like that. So it's building all of these relationships um, between people and. Um, I looked at I think I looked at the stats before I came over here, and one of our primary metrics. So we measure, um, you know, uh, what percentage of the population has adopted Bonfire, how often are they using it, what percentage of those people are actually posting content. Um, our customers average forty five percent monthly engagement from their users, which means forty five percent of people actually post or like content. Um, because we spent a lot of time and money making Bonfire a tool that people actually like using, that they find simple, intuitive, and delightful. Um, so I hope, does that yeah. answer your question? Yeah, for sure. I guess the question I have is how do you, I mean, because we create a lot of content. Right. Making sure that it is something that people want to consume is the challenge. Mm -hmm. So when you're sort of crowdsourcing, when you're, you're you know, sourcing it from, mm -hmm. do you manipulate the content or is it all organic? Um, it's so we help our customers put together a um, content strategy, really an engagement strategy and a content plan 
but uh, just, I mean, kind of generally speaking, uh, customers might, we might help our customers put together one or two posts a week. Sometimes those are posts related to a particular challenge or, um, but you know what, I'll even pull up um, one of the manufacturing bonfires, you guys can see it for yourself, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, this is, this is just all so it's a mix of employee. somebody from the internal communications team or something yep. probably creating the CEO message yep. and then mixed interspersed with uh, here's my doll here's, well, and the other, the other here's thing. what I ate for dinner last night. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but you know, but it's, yeah. it's funny because I mean people people will ask, well, what's the value, I mean, um, what's the value of a cat photo, right? And um, you know, it goes back to trust, right? And um, for us, there's, there's a lot of uh, evidence and academic research out there that shows the correlation connection between what we might call relatedness, meaning how much do we have in common and how much I trust you, right? Mm -hmm. um, really, commonality is a big part of the fabric of relationships. And so um, we would say, actually, you know, in, in, in a proportionate sense, the more people um, understand about who, you know, who you are and what you care about, whether it's you have a cat and I have a cat or oh wow, you like to go running, I go running too, let's go run together. Um, we think those, those kinds of things are, are important. Um, but the other key thing I think is recognizing um, the world we live in, right? So the world we live in is if you're, if you're spending hundreds, I mean some of our customers, I mean they were spending hundreds of hours per new, internal newsletter and then wondering, or well some don't know how many are even reading it, but for those that do, um, you you, you got to start to question your return on investment when you're getting five to eight percent of your employees actually opening the thing up, um, and that's because people don't want to read a five-page document today. What they want is a thirty-second video. They want a, t a, a a a little message they can read right on their phone. Um, and so I think you know when we think about the future of work and the future of culture, um, that sort of snackable. Uh, kind, kind of content communication uh, we think is pretty key and that's what we deliver in Bonfire. You know, one of the things you were, you were talking about earlier was trust and probably one of the um, most integral parts of this is that, you know, people are interacting and sharing what they want to share, mm -hmm. right? So like, yep. I may not, we may be coworkers, I may be wary about letting you have access into my life via my social media mm -hmm. channels because I'm worried you're not going to like the same mm -hmm. singer I like or mm -hmm. you're not going to like my cat pictures or something like that. But with this, it gives people the opportunity to engage on kind of an even platform where they can be feel comfortable sharing as much as they want to share mm -hmm. or as little as they want to share. They can just learn about other people. You know, It, it does allow an avenue for that with a, a certain amount of um, Control. security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the, the, to me, the value I, uh, as a internal communications person who's using you know that to build culture to mm -hmm. you know help us all align and move forward together especially as we grow and we've you know trying to you know scale this globally um the value i that i see is that you're interspersing those sort of company messages in with those you know team member messages and so they don't even really realizing they're consuming that on some level if it's done properly it's quick and oh i might want to look at this now as opposed to you know, because I'm going to look through the feed anyway to look for the cat pictures. Well, that's, yeah, actually, so um, I'd expand on that and sort of say that part of the, so we have a pulse survey tool, right? We have uh, the internal communications tool suite that we have, the employee recognition tool suite. The point is, is if you start with the employee at the center and you say, what would be valuable, what, what sort of community, in terms of communication, would be valuable to the employee? And we start with that. You can you leverage an ecosystem that's sticky that people are already engaging with on a regular basis to then ask your survey question to then distribute information or distribute your announcement. So as a result of that, you get more impact because you're not asking people to click a link and go take a survey on a platform that they never use except to only take the survey when you ask them to or go to this platform to recognize somebody and that's the only thing you will ever do on that platform. It's like it, it's hard to keep those kinds of things top of mind. And the other thing I would say, just to go back to trust for a second, 
I, I just didn't want to lose this. You know, um, so many of our customers, particularly with this type of employee audience, there's fear of, you know, like, oh, like, what are they going to say? You know, are people going to say bad things in, in Bonfire? And in our experience, I'd say um, we, have ne- we have never had to delete a post or, I mean, there's really never been anything. But there's no anonymity inside Bonfire. I mean, it, but, but at the same time, it's an opportunity to extend trust. I mean, much the same way, like, you know, again, in the book when it's like um, Bob rips out all the time clocks and all that stuff, right? Like, that's a big, that's a big gesture. That's a big sort of moment uh, for, the, for the employee. And I think the same is true in the digital experience. Like, I guess the question we ask our customers is, do you want that to change? You know, because your, because your employees are, they're already communicating with each other. They're just, they're just doing it in an, in an environment that you can't see through group text or on Facebook or whatever. Um, and if you actually want to make a change, you have to extend trust to get it. It goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's done your homework. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, this is no, but I mean, like, you know, yeah. this, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is the world we live in. And I mean, and, and you know, our, our, our purpose at Bonfire is to deliver technology to create a world where everyone loves their job. And for us, relationships and culture are um, uh, foundationally important to that. Very, yeah, very much so. And, and you know, go, coming back to kind of a, kind of bring everything back to the point, you know, this is, you know, we call the podcast the Everybody Matters Podcast because, you know, we want to uh, expose people to ways where everybody can feel like they matter at work, just like you just said. What are some kind of the success stories that you've seen in relation to that as you guys have been interacting with customers and, and expanding? Sure. Um, so, I, you know, I guess I gave the example of just having, many, having employees have a space where they, you know, appreciation should go beyond just work. I think actually maybe that's one of the, the coolest things we see is that um, I think many companies have an opportunity to expand their thinking around what recognition means. Recognition is not just about the core values. That certainly is part of it, right? Those, those target behaviors. But it's also recognizing, oh, you know, my kid just graduated from high school, or I just had this major personal life achievement. Um, Experiencing appreciation for the person you are at work is just as important as the work you're doing, Um, if not more so in some cases. Um, So I think that's definitely one of the most, um, one of the most important outcomes. Um, You know, removing the second, being being a part of, because we're not a, it's not all bonfire, right, but um, being a part of sort of removing that second-class um, citizenship, so to speak, uh, divide that exists between hourly employees and everybody else, um, leveling the playing field with the digital communications technology that it can actually bring people together. You know, you take, for example, employee resource groups, right? That's, uh, for many companies, one of the few avenues where they actually literally bring manufacturing or hourly employees together with knowledge workers. Um, we do that in a digital space and we can expand that way beyond just, you know, um, one particular interest and in, into many. So I feel like you were going to tell a story at the beginning that I might have stopped you about uh, talking to Bob on the phone. Did I, did I interrupt that? Oh, I mean, it wasn't a terribly long story. It was just, <laughs> you know, I guess it was just, um, it's just kind of inter- it's just I was just thinking about it on the way over here um, and just thinking back to you know when Bob and I talked we were bonfire um, was I think we had we had more or less just woken up to or realized that what we were doing in events was really just a part of a much bigger picture related to culture and engagement and um, you know I was fortunate enough to be able to talk with you know, Bob, who's arguably one of the standard bearers for um, this focus on relationship and, and uh, focusing on the full human behind the work, not just the work they're doing. Um, and in fact, in doing so, driving the most performance, uh, that, that, that's the way to, to get to performance, right? Um, so it's just, it's just it, it, it's a, it, it was just interesting for me to sort of think back and, and you know, realize that um, here we are, you know, what, three years, four years later, and um, so much of what Bob is talking about and written about and 
um, is just a part of Bonfire's DNA. You know, people will hear the message that we have, and they'll say, "How do you? How do I do that? Then, how do I get from point A to point B?" Mm -hmm. You know, we have a way of doing it through our, you know, our leadership institute helps companies figure out how to start the journey. But that's actually um, so. The Sendelaney firm I mentioned earlier, um, we have a number of partners that are sort of in the culture um, consulting space, and um, without oversimplifying, I'd say you know, what Bonfire brings to the table, right? So if you take your, whatever your IP, IP is that you're delivering to the company about how to build a great culture, everybody's got a different approach, right? But inevitably, every company you're working with is going to find itself asking the question, which is, okay, I've trained all the managers, all the people that I can afford to train and, you know, you've given us all this content and IP and this great concepts, but now what? How do I actually bring this, operationalize this into the entire organization? So really that's where Bonfire comes in is where we're a platform designed to do exactly that. Um, but to your point, we can't do it alone either. You know, I mean, if, if the company and leadership are not embracing these concepts, um, Bonfire can only go so far. You know, we can we can solve surface level communication problems. We can help make your employee recognition program feel less like corporate wallpaper, as as Bob would describe it. But um, you know, if you're not if you're not really fully invested um, in those ideas and concepts, um, you need both. So that's why we partner with those firms is because um, their clients are already they're they're. They're buying into that, right? And so we're, it's a good moment for us to come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, starting with our purpose, which again is delivering technology to create a world where everyone loves their job. So that that sort of encapsulates what, what we want to achieve for our companies is really for their employees to love what they do. But putting that in sort of more practical terms and what's the, what's the outcome for organizations, um, we want to show the the a, a data driven connection between relationships and culture to bottom line outcomes uh, within an organization uh, related to performance related to retention employee engagement scores etc which we're already starting to see and through our tool uh, get provide insight meaningful actionable data and insights upstream um, to enable companies to become proactive as opposed to reactive in terms of how they're managing their people challenges or their people. Because to, the situation today is most companies, do they do whatever, an annual engagement survey or semi-annual engagement survey, they're, they're pretty much finding out about their problems uh, or challenges with their people um, too late. You know, I mean, I mean, sometimes I even wonder, I mean, engagement surveys are great to do, don't get me wrong, but if you're not getting that data until six months after you've done the survey, I mean, you know, a lot can change in six months. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is this need, I think, for something that's much more real time um, that, that uh, Bonfire can deliver. So, so that, that I'd say is, is uh, the transformation that we hope to bring to, to organizations. Yeah, that's an interesting point, helping companies see the numbers, right? Right in engagement mm -hmm. and in good culture, you mm -hmm. know, because so many companies won't take the leap because they're in such a mindset of a profit mindset that if they don't see numbers, mm -hmm. they won't invest in it. Yeah, and, a, and a, um, maybe to go back to that example of um, I was talking about the chat analysis. Sorry, the uh, chat analysis tool that we have. Um, so again, it, it categorizes what people are posting into four categories, internal communications, sort of informing people about what's going on in the company, um, sharing knowledge and collaborating, building relationships and recognition. So to use that example again, let's say you need to improve the feeling employees have about their appreciation at work. So why is this, tool, why is this chat analysis tool so impactful? Because you can not only see at the ecosystem level across all of your bonfires, how, what percentage of conversation is related to recognition or appreciation? And you can actually correlate that to a campaign you might have run. But you can also break it down by community. And why that's so important is because, as we all know, 
Just because the company says appreciation and recognition is important doesn't mean that every single manager and every single person is going to embrace it to the same degree. And when you can segment and you can say, oh, wow, making this up, um, you know, uh, Bob, it looks like your bonfire community is performing two standard deviations lower than the average in terms of percentage of conversation to, related to recognition. And communities that are performing at or above the average happen to have a 60 to 70 percent correlation to performance, to retention. To, so now you, can act, now you can go to a manager who might have thought, oh, you know, that stuff's fluffy. Like, who, who cares about appreciation, right? And you can, you can actually change their mind um, with, with, with the power of data connecting it to those bottom line outcomes. So that's, hopefully that was a helpful example of what we, what we aim to achieve with our customers. Thanks for listening to the Everybody Matters podcast today. If you'd like to find out more about Bonfire, go to bonfireapp.com. That's B-O-N-F-Y-R-E-A-P-P.com. If you'd like to find out more about Bob Chapman and Ross Zodia's book, Everybody Matters, the extraordinary power of caring for your people like family, go to everybodymattersbook.com. For updates on the book, this podcast, to get a lot of great content and insight, don't forget to connect with us on the web at barrywaymiller.com, on Twitter at barrywaymiller, on Facebook and LinkedIn, and check out our blog, trulyhumanleadership.com. I'm Brent Stewart. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, Everybody Matters is the only business idea with truly unlimited potential.